A lot of people are very excited at the moment about agentic AI. It's significant to change in our industry, and I'm excited about it too. And I think it's more important than ever to have a good mental model for designing software. Once agents can produce code so quickly, it's even more clear that what we as humans are bringing to the table is not typing, it's engineering skills. So what is a good mental model for designing software in an age of generative AI coding agents? Hi, I'm Emily Bache. I'm a software developer, creator of Saman Coaching. Welcome to the Modern Software Engineering channel, where we're actually several presenters, all with a common goal to bring you great advice on the technical aspects of software engineering, how to build software using modern approaches, and wider commentary on our industry. Let's talk about how the design process works when you've got an agentic AI tool. I mean something like Windsurf or Cursor or Claude Code which has a large language model working in a loop using tools. Kent Beck actually calls these things a coding genie because they can seem somewhat capricious in the solutions they come up with to fulfill your requests. But these tools do change the way we write software. Previously on this channel, Dave Farley has talked about the importance of acceptance test driven development when you're working with AI tools. And I've heard this from others too. It is important to specify what the code should do and automated acceptance tests are a good way to do that. When you're writing those tests, you need to also create written descriptions of, of what the functionality should be in, in plain language. Probably more detailed than you'd write if you weren't using the Gen AI tools. But then on the other hand, these tools will help you to write those descriptions. Because you've spent some effort specifying what the code should do in a reasonable amount of detail, Writing the actual code should be well within the Gen AI tool's abilities. And often they'll create working code with reasonable names drawn from the same vocabulary as you use in the tests and the specifications. And since you've got those tests to guard against regression, you can build on what you've done and get more capabilities. So the other important aspect here is to work incrementally, work on one new test at a time and build up a solution to a larger problem. Code quality is still important because even if I'm not directly writing much of the code, if it clearly communicates the intent, that will be easier for the AI to work with in future, as well as human programmers, of course. So after each new test is working, you need to look at the code and judge if it's good enough. And I find it helps to put additional guards in place to try and ensure that the tool is, is coming up with a reasonably good design in the first place. I've got an example here from Llewellyn Falco. It's part of a standard prompt that he includes in all his projects. He tells the tool, use these code principles. We prefer simple, clean, maintainable solutions over clever or complex ones. Readability and maintainability are primary concerns. Self-document with names and, and code. Use small functions and follow the single responsibility principle in classes and functions. There's more to it, but that's the kind of the core of these instructions. If after all that, you're looking at the code and still thinking the design could be better here, well, then you ask it to make improvements. That's one of the great advantages of spending so much energy on good specifications, acceptance tests, is you can ask the Gen AI tool just to try again. And I hesitate to call this refactoring because that's not what it's doing. It's coming up with new code, a new design, that fits within the constraints that you've given it. And parts might be the same as before and look like it's refactored, but fundamentally it has not been working with the parse tree. It has not been doing safe transformations and converting those things back to code. If that's what I want, I need to use a deterministic refactoring tool, go to my IDE, make those design improvements myself. Of course, at some point I expect the AI will be able to do those deterministic tools by itself, but for the moment, I'm still doing some of that by hand. My emphasis normally is doing all of this process to manage that complexity so that the code is not unnecessarily hard to understand and work with. We need to find good abstractions, good opportunities to modularize the code, partition functionality, separate concerns. As Dave Farley says in his book, Modern Software Engineering, 
This is one of the fundamental jobs as software engineers that we have. We need to manage the complexity in the software. The other fundamental job is to optimize so we're continually learning, learning about the problem that we're solving and about the strengths and limitations of the medium we're working with, the code. The way I see it, when I'm working with agentic AI, I'm still the one doing the engineering. I'm using an empirical process based on iteration, getting towards a solution. The main constraints on how fast I can go are not really how quickly the AI can spit out code with valid syntax. It's really how quickly I can learn about the problem and how well I can manage the complexity. The mental model that I use for working together with agentic AI is something like this. Start with the user needs. Break down the problem into smaller chunks that can be solved separately. Take one of those chunks and specify the needed behavior in some detail. Also specify coding standards. Get the tool to write the code. The first design it comes up with may need improvement. Do that and then go back and take the next suitable chunk of functionality, specify it, and so on. There is an additional factor though with the Agentic AI. At every step, you're trying to optimize the contents of the tool's context window so it can work exclusively on the current task that you want it to do. As a mental model for how to design software together with Agentic AI, this sounds suspiciously like test-driven development. Of course, that's not a coincidence. The biggest fundamental shift in my mental model for how to design software happened when I learned test-driven development not when I learnt coding with Agentic AI. When I first encountered TDD, I'd already been doing software design for several years, and I wasn't that bad at it. And actually, I don't think Kent Beck was bad at design when he first started doing TDD either. I think the main point with test-driven development is it gives you this new mental model for how to do design that allows you to get even better results. So what TDD forces you to do is focus. Focus on a particular aspect of design in each step. And by doing that, you reduce the number of things you need to keep in your head at once. And the process overall is less stressful. So TDD is reducing your cognitive load. And that's good for you, but it's also good for an agentic AI tool. In fact, the only thing that I think is really kind of new for me coming to a gen AI tool is, is having to think about this context window as a first order consideration. But actually, that is very closely related to the way I'm managing complexity and breaking down the problem and focusing on one aspect of design at a time in the TDD process. So what I think we're talking about here is that test-driven development is a mental model for an empirical engineering approach to software design. And that is the important thing you need to learn. If you're already good at software engineering and have these skills, you will be able to use those agentic AI tools to enhance and augment your skill. You'll be able to come up with good designs faster and more easily than before. If, however, you don't have a good mental model for software design and engineering, then the agentic AI will probably just help you to make a mess faster. You won't be adequately breaking down the problem into small pieces or managing the complexity. And to be honest, that's what I'm hearing in those sad stories when people have failed with Agentic AI. They haven't managed to get that modular code with loose coupling. They hit a wall of complexity and they can't progress. If you're interested in learning more, then check out my free guides to using code carters to learn test-driven development. And of course, if you enjoyed the video today, don't forget to hit like. And if you'd like to hear more like this, hit subscribe too. So in conclusion, Learning test-driven development, I think, is an important skill for mastering software engineering with agentic AI. Happy coding!